It's time to pay homage to Cologne, Germany with a beer that's simple to brew and a simple recipe but oh so good when it's done right. It's time to brew a German Kolsch and we're going to talk about packaging in kegs. So if you like your beers nice and simple, then this is the beer for you. All I've got here is six pounds of German Pilsner malt mixed in with four pounds of Vienna malt. Going for a gravity of about 1049, which should give a beer at about 5% ABV. Mashing in my Unibrow system at 152 Fahrenheit for about an hour. So what makes a Kolsch a Kolsch? Well, yes, simple recipe. So I'm using 60% Pilsner malt, 40% Vienna malt. Actually, the more traditional way to do it is just to go in with Pilsner malt, 100%. Also, those German noble hops, they're important. But the thing that really distinguishes a Kolsch is the fermentation temperature. And that's because it uses ale yeast but is fermented like a lager. So typically, uh, an ale you would ferment around 65, 68 Fahrenheit, um, but with a Kolsch you're going to use that ale yeast and ferment at 60 Fahrenheit. Once fermentation is done, which is going to take a bit longer than in the regular ale, you're then expected to lager the beer for about four more weeks. And then once you're done with all that, well, you'd better get to drinking because Kolsch is also quite well known for its short shelf life. To preserve those delicate flavors, you'll want to drink it as soon as it's ready. When it comes to hopping, you're going to want to use noble hops. I'm using Hallertau Mittenfrö, and at 60 minutes, I have two ounces of Hallertau going in. And then with 15 minutes left, I have half an ounce going in. It's going to give me an IBU of about 26. So let's talk then about packaging beer into kegs. What I essentially want to do here is take the beer out of this fermenter and get it into this keg while minimizing the amount of oxygen that gets mixed up with the beer. Oxygen in beer at this stage, at the cold side, that's a bad thing. It could potentially lead to off flavors and it will shorten the shelf life of the beer. Now I'm using the SS Brewtech brew bucket and this has a tap at the bottom of it. So what I could do, the simplest thing, would simply be just to turn this tap on, open up my keg, and then just sort of pour it directly into the keg. The problem with that is there's gonna be a lot of splashing and a lot of oxygen is gonna get mixed in with the beer. So what I do is I use the dip tube of the keg. So I'm gonna connect up my fermentation vessel with the liquid outpost of the keg and then send the beer down the dip tube into the bottom of the keg and that will minimize the amount of splashing and therefore the amount of oxygen that's getting mixed in. Now to keep the beer flowing, I need a way to get rid of all of the air that's currently in this keg, a way for it to escape. So I'm just using my gas connector here, connected to absolutely nothing, which I'll put on the gas post. And that way, as beer comes in, the air can escape out the other way. 
So using this approach, I am minimizing at least the amount of splashing that is resulted from the beer moving into my keg, but I'm certainly not eliminating oxygen altogether. I mean, the keg is full of oxygen to start with, so as the beer goes in, it could end up mixing with that oxygen a bit. Um, and as this drains, I am allowing a layer of oxygen that is on the top of this fermenter um, as, as the beer drops down. So the ideal thing to do would be to do this whole thing under pressure of CO2 and just eliminate oxygen completely. Now this fermentation vessel, the brew bucket, is only rated for one PSI of pressure. And I'm a little bit concerned about putting any sort of pressure into this brew bucket. So that's why I'm using the system that I'm using. But hey, if you're doing pressurized transfers, I'd love to hear how you're doing it. I've moved the beer into my freezer where I will chill it down to 60 Fahrenheit. At that point, I'll add my yeast, WLP 029, German ale Kolsch yeast. So I have Joe here with me to taste the Kolsch. Welcome, Joe. Thank you. Now this beer has been conditioning for about four weeks now since fermentation. It came down to 10.08 and uh, it ended up as a 6% beer. So, after all of the hassle of brewing this beer, uh, with a cat on your lap, what do you think about the, uh, the colour, first of all, of this? It's uh, golden, looks nice wheat colour. Yeah, it's, it's a little cloudy still. Um, I think if I conditioned it a bit longer, maybe it would be less cloudy, but um, yeah, it looks the part. Okay, so then what about aroma? A mild hoppy smell to it. It's not as malty as I'd expect, but... It smells light. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's see what we think about the taste. Tastes good. A little uh, malty. Yeah, it is. It is. It tastes a lot maltier than it smells, I think. Yeah. The other thing that um, they say about this beer style, though, is a, an ale like this would just take like two weeks and it'd be done. But this one, you're supposed to condition it and age it for a little bit. And then it has a really short shelf life, apparently. So I'm going to be interested to see how this beer tastes different in a few weeks. Um, Hopefully it won't be around. But that's the good point, that if there is any, uh, yeah, probably not. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Now you can tell me what you really think. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's good. You could drink eight of them and... Please do. I've got so much <laughs> beer. I need someone to drink this damn beer. <laughs> Get that man a beer. <laughs>